my musical landscape. Beyond the spheres that orbit our sun, across the stars, through black holes that lace the inner realm, shapes like dippers, kites, and strings of pearls, sounds that echo, crests of dried orbs, whizzing, whirling, twirling, crashing, swirling through timeless space, in circles round, oblong, and elliptical. I never intended to be a composer because it was too personal, actually very private. <clears throat> I was in Milwaukee at one point and there was a lecture, How a Composer Works. And this intrigued me, but it was quite far away. And I decided to go to it. And it was a Russian no one ever heard of before, named Alexander Cherepnin. And he talked about composition. And it was very interesting. He said, having a, a, a creating a piece, it, you don't, it's not really there until it's performed. He said, it's like having a child, he said, until it's born, and that's the, that's the first performance. And he also talked about meeting Debussy. Then he said, if there are any questions, I'll be here afterwards, and we can sit and discuss them. So after many questions were asked, I was rather shy then, and I raised my hand, and I said, well, what if you hear, you can play something on the piano, and you can hear it, and you want to use this mute, that's what you play, and it's not in the, in the theory books, so you can't really write it. And then he said, well, you can. He said, wait afterwards, and I want to talk to you. And he said, have you ever composed? And I said, yes. And he said, well, I'd like to see what you've written. And that was the beginning of a very long, long, encouraging, I would say, uh, friendship as a, as, as a mentor, in my, very important in my life. Otto Luning is another important person in a different way, I would say. Um, I had studied with him at Columbia, and he was, I think, very special because all the people who studied with him, he would find out what your personality was, what your interests were, and somehow he would guide you in a direction that was like, well, I mean, like some of his pupils were opera composers and some were different. So that, and he also became good friends of many of his students. Uh, so, but he stayed, we stayed in touch all his life for many, many years, and even when I was here. I fell in love with Munich when I first saw it. That was 1969, which was a long time ago. Um, it was a different time, actually. And there were many Americans in Munich then. Uh, the Americans had occupied uh, this area after World War II. So it was still a feeling of that relaxation after World War II. I was going to study theater with a woman who lived in Stuttgart. And somehow, I, I think that's part of my life. I, I hadn't studied what it would look like in Stuttgart or Munich. And I, I just acted, I think, uh, intuitively. I decided I would be better and happier in Munich. I began using Glissandi way back around 1970 in there. And I had to invent my own way of notation, which I could use then my visual elements. 
And then it was interesting to see how long this little movement would last, that it could be notated, and then I always think of the performer. So anyway, I developed a notation. But then later, there were ways that I could use the art more directly. And one of them is a piece I had, which was performed here, uh, for a religious, uh, the even evangelical, I guess the Protestant religion had a, uh, an anniversary, and I was asked to write a piece. And so I drew a picture of an angel, and I composed that angel in sound, but I also went through the hymn book and took all the hymns that I knew that had angels in them, and that became a quartet. And so I, I composed the piece using this as a structure, as a form. And as you can see, it, it, I, I think I made little notes here. But there are several things going on. There's the picture that I have. And it's the organ is also, that's actually the organ is doing two different things. I can't tell you, you have to hear the piece. But anyway, but basically that's the basic structure. I started writing string quartets after I wrote many songs. And I think the string quartet was closer to the human voice and also it sort of suited me because I had more freedom because of the vocal part. But as far as the symphony is concerned, I never ever thought I would write a symphony and I didn't write symphonies. And then I finally had a commission from the Stuttgart radio. It came in the form of a letter in the mail, which is unusual. And I could write as large a work as I wanted to which I never had that privilege before. So uh, I wrote a piece with like four of everything. And I was able to, to finally have my glissandi uh, with overlapping with all the instruments playing glissandi. I was in, here in Germany, and my father was in Wisconsin, very ill. I had visited him two weeks before in the hospital, and I thought he would live for another four or five months. But I called and talked to another sister-in-law, and they said he was alone in the hospital, but he had lost his voice. And that night, I couldn't sleep. And I, I was awake, and suddenly, around two in the morning, I had a, a very intense feeling that something had happened, and I started to cry. And I had the radio on, and I could hear the Leopold Stokowski's from Dieter Aeneas, When I'm Laid in Earth, on the radio. And it was almost like he was talking to me. And after... After I was there maybe five minutes, four minutes, suddenly I looked around and the room, like there was light. The whole room seemed like it was in light and I wasn't sad. And it wasn't until maybe 10 o'clock during the day that I had a phone call and it was my sister-in-law saying, your mother wants to talk to you and she said, that my father had died, and it was at that very time. Mm. So I was very moved, but I, I couldn't write a piece at that time. But a year later, I was able to compose a work which I dedicated, which is the symphony. And I took uh, actually various things I had uh, that had happened to me during that year. And the first movement is using the When I Am Laid in Earth, which is a Pasacalia, 
that means that there's a melody in the bass that goes on. So I use the Pasacaglia in here throughout the first movement and I change it, but it goes up and up in variations and various events are in the other instruments. And then somewhere in a mass of sound, you can hear the melody in that movement and then a rising and the finality of it.